Well, hey guys, it's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living. We are having a beautiful, beautiful spring day right now. It is probably 65 degrees in the sun. I can't hardly see. I've got to wear this hat and keep my hair out of my face. But I'm really excited to go check out what is going on with the beehives. I have not looked at the bees. I have not gone in the hives. I've pretty much ignored them for the last six months because it's been so cold. It hasn't been above 50 degrees in six months. And that's pretty wild to say. I think last year I checked out the bees maybe mid-March, maybe mid-February. And I wasn't even able to look at them a month ago because it was so cold. But I did see something promising. I saw some signs of life. I saw some bees flying around the entrance earlier. I saw them yesterday flying around. So I know that there's survival going on somewhere. I'm just not sure if both hives survived. So that's what I need to figure out today. First, I need to do some emergency maintenance. I need to make sure that they have food to survive until the wildflowers start coming up. That's not until May, guys. That is almost six weeks away. So I really am not sure, because I haven't looked in the hives, what their food situation is. I don't know if they're out of food. I don't know, you know, what is happening. I, I'm really worried about that. So I'm, I put together a sugar patty last night, and I'm gonna put that into the hive. So that's my primary objective is to figure out their food situation. Number two, I have to figure out if hive number two is alive. Uh, I did see bee activity, but I gotta take a closer look and find out if it's just the neighbors. Maybe it's the neighboring hive that's going in. Um, it just, it's not a lot of activity, so it's not that promising. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna find, and I'm hoping that it's some good news, and maybe um, if there's bad news, the good news will ba balance it out. But I wanted to share with you guys, it's kind of an exciting day because it's so warm and I'm not even wearing a winter coat. <laughs> Actually feeling kind of hot right now with the sun beating down on me. So it's a warm day and it's the most opportune time to open up the hives for the first time since last fall and see what the heck's going on. See what's going on with the bees and see what this summer's gonna look like for them this season just to see what kind of shape they're in. So let's go take a look. So this is some of the candy fondant that I prepared last night, just in case the bees are really, really low on food storage. It's warm enough right now, I can pop, pop it right in there, lay it on top. Uh, I even have a spacer I can put in the hive if I wanna put more in. I don't know how really warm it is if I wanna dig around the hive and see what their honey stores are, but I just might throw this patty on top for insurance. It's kind of flexible. It's, um, I'm gonna just have to peel the silicone off and uh, put it on top there. But well, let's go take a look at the hive and we'll see you know, what's um, going on over there. Well, as you can see, it's very snowy getting over to the beehives. We're getting a lot of melt from the strong sun right now. It's probably 50, 55 degrees. And with the sun, it's definitely penetrating the snow layer, getting everything melt right into the ground here. I could, this ground still feels pretty hard when I'm walking on it, so I know um, definitely some patches are still quite frozen. But when you get down closer to the hives, there's a lot of really soft ground as well. The snow's still pretty deep right over here, but right in front of the hives, you've got the snow melt, and that that, water, that mud right there is really soft. So let's take a preliminary look on the outside. It's a lot of activity here on hive one. A lot of bees going back and forth to the entrance. So that's promising. Hive two, not so much. I mean, there's a couple bees flying in there, but I'm wondering if it's just curious neighbors from next door. So what I'm gonna do is take a quick peek into hive two see if there's any signs of life. And then hive one, I'm gonna throw that sugar patty down. It's not quite warm enough where I feel comfortable digging around the hive and really assessing their honey storage, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put that sugar patty in and close it right back up. And uh, hopefully that'll give them some sustenance until the, the spring comes, where um, all the pollen and nectar start flowing. There's a lot of dead bees in front of hive two. 
In fact, both hives. This time of year when it's finally warm enough, they do all of their cleansing and any bees that died over the winter, they let them out. And see how many dead bees there are at the entrance. So that's the bees housekeeping. And those are just, you know, byproducts of winter. They don't get a chance to do it all winter. So it's a lot, it looks like a lot of dead bees all at once when you get warm enough temperatures for the bees to go outside. So I'm going to disconnect this, oh, muddy. disconnect this um, solar fence so I can get inside here. There we go. Been pretty fortunate. I have not accidentally touched the fence when it was on. Definitely bees in this hive. Uncapped I see a lot of honey. There's a lot of honey in here that uh, is not eaten. So I'm wondering if the bees next door are trying to make use of this. I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna leave it. Unless this hive has no food. Pink stuff is my insulation from earlier this year. In fact, I'll probably take it off now. So, uh, definitely seeing some capped honey. I think the brood nest is lower because they're bu definitely buzzing as I move this thing around. Oh yeah, there's a lot of bees in there. This is great. Um, they're really overwintered well and they have plenty of honey. So they're not going to need this, the food that I made them. An old pollen patty in here from this fall. They haven't eaten that. So I'm just going to leave all of this here. The bees will take care of it. And um, it sounds like they're excited to get started for spring. They have good numbers it looks like so far. So, But this hive doesn't look so good. So unfortunately you win some you lose some. What I might end up doing this spring is splitting this hive. This is the colony I got two years ago from a beekeeper in Colorado who was up in the mountains and he said he bred them specifically for Colorado weather res resistance. And they've always, they overwintered last year. And this has been our toughest winter yet, coldest, and they're exceptional. And I still have plenty of honey storage. So um, <clears throat> I think uh, everything looks really promising. I think that, um, you know, in case we don't get really warm temperatures for an, another few weeks, I feel good just about leaving this extra food on there. And maybe they like a little variety. We'll see. This does create a little bit of a gap, but that's a little bit of extra ventilation, so that's good for the bees. So I'm really encouraged overall about um, how they're doing and how they overwintered. Really impressive. We had some really high winds, we had some really bitter cold, we had some really deep snow and the bees are doing great. There's a lot of bees in here. This hive, 
The story behind this hive is that they had mites, a pretty high mite count at the end of the summer, and I probably should have stayed on top of that better and not let it get so high. So when I treated them right as fall was hitting, I think it was, they were already too far gone with the mite infestation, and so they didn't have a big enough cluster to overwinter, which is kind of sad. This is the hive that swarmed on me because they were running out of room. But the good news is, is I can take the frames of honey out of here, put it in this hive, and they'll have plenty of sustenance. So once we get the, into the, um, the nectar flow, we will be able to um, really get a good honey supply this year, hopefully. Hopefully everything works out well and we'll have some good weather and we'll get a really nice honey flow. I see um, the entrance reducer is a little pushed out and I see a lot of dead bees right in there at the entrance. That's pretty normal for them. Um, keeping the entrance pretty small because we're still going to have more, a lot more cold weather. A lot of activity. I'm going to push this in a little bit. This hive, unfortunately, is kind of sad. I think, honestly, I think all of these bees are from this hive that are going over there and they're just checking it out, checking out what the food source is. I'm, I'm looking at Hive 2 right now, and it's, uh, it's actually really hard to know if this is a colony or if I th actually think it might be the colony. Um, you know, if you whack a hive and it has a, a loud hum, then that's kind of like the brood nest, the colony is like, whoa, what are you doing? But this could also be bee um, of all of these neighboring bees checking out this hive. This is a big pollen patty. I was feeding them in the fall. And they didn't take it all, but they were gonna, they're going to need it this spring. But I'm gonna, I really want to figure this out. Just a lot more bees than what I would expect to see in uh, just bees visiting from next door. So it could be the colony. I could dig around a little bit, but I'm not really feeling it. The way to know for sure would be to come out here on a cold day with a stethoscope and then bang on the hive and see if there's any bees in there. Because if they're just visiting, then they will be in their own hive in the cold weather. But if this is the colony over, that overwintered, then they're gonna stay in here when it's cold out. Kind of cool though. I think they're happy to have the sun. It's really hot right now in the sun. I think it's 65, 67. It feels like 70 because I'm starting to sweat with these gloves on and long sleeve shirt. Uh oh, be overboard. Be overboard. This one's not dead. Yeah, there's a lot of dead bees right there, which also makes me think this could be an overwintered colony because they cleaned out all their dead bees. It just maybe not quite as uh, robust as this hive because of all the activity. And this hive is humming. This hive not so much, but there's sure a lot of bees in here. So I'm doing a little digging around and what I'm finding is that there's, there's no bees in this bottom box down in here. If you can see between the, the frames, the top is where all these bees are. And I really think that these are the neighbor bees that are just collecting all the food that's been abandoned all winter. But I really don't see any bees. I don't see dead bees. I don't see any cluster of bees. Um, so my conclusion is that this hive is defunct and all the bees that we're seeing are from the neighboring hive and they're just collecting all the, all the leftover food, all the bounty that they're scoring right now. So unfortunately this hive is, was a loss. This was a new, New colon, um, a new colony from last year. Last spring I bought a nuke, um, a starter hive, and they just seem to have a lot of mite issues, so I'm not surprised that they didn't quite make it. So my, th my thinking is what I'm gonna do, since this hive is so strong over here, is I'm gonna split this hive and move half of them over here once the weather warms up. And um, once this queen starts laying in another month or so I'll take an empty frame of eggs and move them over to here and go, take a good portion of the bees on frames and move them over to here and we'll see if we can create a second hive 
And if it doesn't work out, I'll move them all back to the original hive. But that's that's my plan. I'm, I'm actually surprised that this hive has so many bees in it. Last year, there was a very small amount of bees that survived. So I just thought it was normal for winter. Seeing this amount of dead bees in front of an entrance of a hive might be really, really shocking if you're not used to it, especially if you, if you don't have really, lo really long cold winters. But this being the second year, seeing this many dead bees to me is kind of a sign that um, it's, you know, it's, I haven't really opened the hive since October. It's about six months. So it's a long time to go without um, the bees really being able to fly around much at all. So I'm going to pack this guy up because it's windy and the cloud just came over. It's kind of chilly for these guys. I have to tell you, it is somewhat tempting to grab one of these frames of honey and try it out. But I have honestly, the I was feeding these hives a lot of sugar water at the end of the summer. And I don't think it's going to have any special flavor. I'm going to wait until I actually smell the honey. You can smell it have that wildflower scent to it in the middle of harvest season in the middle of the nectar flow and that's the honey I want to try I don't really want to try sugar water honey so I'm going to just put it all back up and let the bees have it and so they can build up really strong and they've got their protein patty in here and they've got their protein patty in the other one so I think they got plenty of food to make it until the first bloom we're only like a month or six weeks out so um and then this whole hill will be covered in wildflowers believe it or not Hard to, it is a little hard to believe to see it all grass and snow right now, but it's nonstop wildflowers for all the way through August, so it's pretty awesome. But time to pack up. Well guys, that's the update from the bee yard. So I'm actually really thrilled. I had my doubts this winter because it was such a long winter and it was so cold and so windy. And just seeing those hives completely buried in the snow, I was like, how are they gonna make it? I mean, I know that they can handle snow, and I know that they handle living in nature all the time, but just the fact that I haven't even looked in the hive since October. I mean, that's like six months ago. And I just had no idea how they were powering through their honey stores, if they were, um, you know, dwindling in numbers. Last year I had a lot of bee die off and there was piles of dead bees in front of the entrance. So, you know, I just thought this year maybe Maybe it was too rough of a winter, but it seems like they're actually thriving. And this is the second year um, age of the queen. So I think it's a good year to split the hive and try to get another queen out of it and make another colony in the neighboring hive. I think it's pretty unfortunate that uh, that hive didn't do so hot. Um, I think it was the pressure of mite overload. And by the time I treated the hive, their numbers just, they just weren't as strong as what they needed to be able to winter through with a giant, with a big cl uh, cluster of bees to keep warm. And they could have flown off. I really, besides the dead bees in the entrance, I don't really have any evidence so far of a lot of bees in the hive at all that are, that are dead. So it's not like they froze to death. It's just hard to know really sometimes, even if you've been a beekeeper for eight years like me, um, to know what's going on. And you know, there's experts in bees that are studying the health and the decline of the bee population. They still don't know what's going on 100%. They know a lot of it has to do with mites and bre breeding bees that are resistant to mites is one of the things that's really hot right now in the bee culture. <laughs> anyway, um, hope you enjoyed the little bee update. I just thought I'd give you guys a little taste of spring around here. Despite all the snow, we still have a lot of activity in nature telling us that spring's around the corner. So that's got me excited. Thinking about what I'm going to be planting this spring. Uh, wildflowers, maybe getting into the garden as well. Uh, anyway, so um, that is, I think I'm going to get out of the way because it, it seems like a, quite a bee highway right here and I'm um, um, colliding with a few sisters in the air. So <laughs> thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.